and welcome to this video and in this video we are going to talk about what are the reasons for the pigtailing and how to fix it in case if you are struggling to fix your pigtailing and not able to understand what are the reasons behind pigtailing how to come out of the situation then this video is for you so let us understand what is meant by pigtailing and here is the definition so when the latter half of the pig is wider than the first half of the pig then you can say that now i have the pigtailing so in case if you divide the the pig into the two halves from its apex and if the left side of the half of the pig and if you compare the width of the right half of the pig if both are equal then you have the accurate gaussian pig but in case if the one half is wider than the another half then you can say that now i have the pigtailing so let me show you with the simple example how you can say that now here is the pigtailing example so in this case the latter half of the pig is having the bigger width as compared to the first half so how to understand the pigtailing and what are the primary reasons for to get a pigtail and here it is so more than one interaction can certainly lead to a pigtailing we know that the retention of analyte is going to happen because of certain interaction with the stationary phase and when i talk about the reverse space chromatography the hydrophobic interaction is the primary interaction by which the retention gets happen but is that the only reason for your interaction or is there any another reason by which your compound also get retained onto the stationary phase that is called as the secondary interaction so primary interaction we completely understand it is hydrophobic interaction the non polar compound will interact with the non polar stationary phase in case of reverse space stationary phase but is there any another interaction by which your non polar compound or polar compound is going to interact with the stationary phase and that is called as the secondary interaction so what is the secondary interaction the secondary interaction is the interaction of your compound with the unreacted selenol groups present onto the stationary phase so in case if your compound is polar or in case if your compound is into ionization form and if the selenol groups are also ionized there is a selenol interaction possible because of the exchange of the proton present onto the selenol groups so the h plus will replace maybe your protonated base that is bh plus and then we can say that the bh plus the protonated base is going to interact or going to retain because of the secondary interaction and we'll talk about that how to come out the secondary interaction as well but before that let us understand what is the second reason because of which you can also see a peak tailing and share it is on the screen so the compound possessing amine and other basic functional groups they can strongly interact with the selenol groups and if they have the stronger interaction with the selenol groups you can see a stronger tailing happening so now let us understand how to avoid the peak tailing so we understand the two important uh, reasons for peak tailing and now in the next point we are going to talk about the five important points you know to avoid the peak tailing the first one is you can operate at a lower ph i mean you need to make your mobile phase with the lower ph or acidic ph the reason is the selenol groups are highly acidic in the nature and if you compare the type a silica and type b silica you will found that the type a silica is highly acidic in the nature whereas type b silica is weaker in the acidic nature but somehow the selenol groups are basically a acidic in the nature and the secondary interaction you know is possible because of what because of the ionization of the selenol groups so how you can minimize suppress reduce the ionization of selenol groups that is sioh you can maintain the ph acidic because in acidic environment this selenol groups will not undergo ionization so you have very straight forward uh, way out now to maintain the ph of mobile phase on to the acidic side let us understand this one uh, outcome uh, 
with the help of simple example and here it is on the screen so there are five different uh, peaks in the chromatograms on your left side the mobile phase ph is equal to 7 and if you look at the asymmetry or tailing of the peak number 4 which is methamphetamine is 2.35 now if you change the ph from 7 to 3 now look at the right side of the uh, chromatogram and you will see that the tailing of the same peak has reduced to 1.33. Now what could be the reason for this reduction in the tailing? It's clearly because of the change in the pH. It is clearly because of the separation of ionization of selenol groups due to acidic pH. So this is the one way of you know, uh, managing the tailing. The second reason, you know, use end capped column. So what is the reason for secondary interaction? Is the availability of unreacted selenol groups and why these selenol groups are available they are available because of the steric hindrance your c8 or c18 chain cannot replace a 100 percentage of the selenol groups and there will be approximately 50 percent unreacted selenol groups present onto your stationary phase so how you can going to reduce those selenol groups now this is because of why there is a bulky molecule. So your C8 or C18 are very bulky molecules and they cannot uh, react with all the present selenol groups. To you know, get these selenol groups blocked by another compounds, you can think of you know, getting your column end capped. So end capped or end capping is done by you know, adding the smaller compounds like trimethyl chlorosilane and this trimethyl chlorosilane are smaller in the size and hence the steric hindrance will not be a problem for them so they can occupy the unreacted selenol groups but still they cannot replace all the selenol groups which are unreacted so in case if there is a columns which are double double with with the double end cap still there is a chance of availability of further unreacted selenol groups but the end capping is a good idea at least to minimize the availability of unreacted selenol groups so let me show you with the simple diagram how this end capping looks like and sure it is so you will see that now the few of the selenol groups you know they got this their hydrogen got replaced with the trimethyl silane. Hmm? Look at here the trimethyl silane. Now earlier there were 50 percentage of the selenol groups were unreacted, but upon addition of this end capping agent like trimethyl chlorosilane, the 50 percentage of that got covered because of the trimethyl chlorosilane. But still there are 50% selenol groups available for the secondary interaction. The next important point is the mass overload. Is that your mass is higher, your injection volume, your concentration of the sample is very high and because of that your peak is getting tailed. In that case, to just assess and understand whether the mass overload is the reason for peak tailing, you can dilute your sample solution to 10x I mean by 1 by 10 in case if it is 1000 ppm make it 100 ppm and then inject and in case if you found that yes now the peak tailing is reduced that means my earlier peak tailing with 1000 ppm was because of the mass overload but in case if you cannot reduce the mass you can certainly think of you know increasing the percent carbon load or increasing the pore size so that the column loading capacity will get enhanced and you will not get the mark uh, you, and and you will not get the peak tailing because of the mass overload the fourth important point is the column bed deformation i mean this is the defect inside the column which make it because of the usage so in case if the column wide or blocked frit are present then certainly you are going to get the peak tailing so how you can do that you can reverse the column and wash it in the reverse direction but by make sure that your detector end is detached otherwise you will unnecessarily contaminate your detector 
but also understand whether a column can be uh, reversed for the washing purpose in the consultation with the column manufacturer. Consider changing solvent filters and the inline filters. So in case if your column freight is getting contaminated because of the mobile phase, certainly your solvent filters and inline filters will help you in minimizing the contamination and the guard column. The guard column is your uh, security guard for your column, you know, rather than contaminating your analytical column, you can save this column from contamination by having guard column in between so that your guard column will get damaged and your analytical column will not. The last point is work at high pH when analyzing basic compounds. Now this is very important to understand. In case if you are working at the higher pH, now what is going to happen at the higher pH or alkaline pH? Your alkaline compound will not undergo ionization. So when the silanol effects will come into a play, it can only come into play when your analyte is into a ionization form. So how to make sure that our, our analyte is not into ionization form? Understand its pKa. In case if it is alkaline compound, its pKa is 7. So certainly at pH above 8, the compound is going to remain unionized. And if it is unionized, it is not going to have the secondary interaction with the selenol groups. Now having said that, it is also important to understand what is the operation range of your column. Now, what is the pH operation range for your column? Can your column be operated at pH 10? In that case, you can think of this particular way out. So, this is the reason, you know, why you can come out of the, the tailing in case if you are struggling with the peak tailing. Thank you very much for, you know, watching this video and I am sure that this video will certainly give you a required way out to your tailing issues. Thank you and look forward to meet you once again with another video. Bye-bye.